good Mother's Day Sunday morning from the chapel on the hill. And a very happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers and grandmothers who are watching. Thank you for joining us again today by way of our church's YouTube channel or church Facebook page. Let us respond to the goodness of this Mother's Day Sunday we have been given as we enter into a spirit of celebration and worship. Let us pray. O oh God, for the beauty and blessings of this Mother's Day, we join our hearts in a spirit of gratitude and worship. How blessed we are to love and to be loved by our families, friends, and members of this community of faith. So we join together in spirit with all those whom we hold dear on this special Mother's Day Sunday. Amen. And now Suzanne, our Minister of Education, has something special for our children. Good morning. Guess what? I miss you. I am looking forward to the day when we can all be back at church. But let me ask you another question. Do you know what today is? Pastor Randy just mentioned it. That's right, it's Mother's Day. So in honor of Mother's Day, I'm gonna tell you a little story. When I was a little girl, I used to get ear infections a lot. And if you've ever had an ear infection, you know they hurt terribly. And it always seemed I would get an infection in the middle of the night when we couldn't go to the doctor. And there wasn't medicine in the house that my mother could give me to make me feel better. So I would lay in bed crying and whimpering because my ear hurt so much. So what my mother would do, she would get a pot of hot water and a washcloth. She would sit in the rocking chair with me. Then she would dip the washcloth in the hot water, wring it out with one hand, and hold it over my ear, all the while rocking me in that chair. Now, it didn't make the pain go away all the way, but just being able to rock with my mother made me feel so much better. And that's what mothers do. They can't always make the bad things go away, although they sure would like to, but they are there with us. Now, someone can be a mother in all sorts of different ways. They come in many shapes and sizes. You can even be a mother if you don't have any kids. So how do you know what a mother is? Well, I have a picture for you. This is a mother. A mother has big ears. She's always ready to listen to us. A mother has very long arms that she can reach around and hug us with, and we can feel those hugs even when we live far away. And a mother has a great big heart, and she will love us forever. So have a happy Mother's Day and celebrate your mother today. Thank you.
Our reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Son of David, she cried out, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, send her away. She is following us and making all this noise. Then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this, the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, it isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's true, sir, she answered, but even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. So Jesus answered her, you are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. I invite you to again join me in a time of prayer and meditation. This morning, we recall the words of the prophet Isaiah when speaking on God's behalf, when he said, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. What a reassuring thought to ponder this morning, to think about comforting grace at those times in our lives when we have so needed to be comforted, whether we felt that the comforting hand was that of God or our mother or a grandmother or someone else who was dear to us. So we express our gratitude this day for the motherly comfort that has helped make our lives what they are, whatever the source of that comfort might have been. And our hope and prayer is that all of these mothers, grandmothers, and mother figures in our lives will know an extra measure of blessing this day. But we also would pray for mothers who find life to be difficult, single and widowed mothers who are struggling, grieving mothers who have lost their children, mothers nursing sick children or who have children with disabilities, homeless mothers and mothers in abusive or dangerous situations, mothers working two jobs or mothers who have lost their jobs and are struggling to provide for their children. How we wish that this Mother's Day could be a warm and fuzzy day for every mother, but knowing that is not the case, we lift our hearts and our prayers for hurting mothers everywhere this day. And then we remember all those upon our minds and in our hearts who have special needs and are in need of comforting grace. To the comforting spirit of life, we entrust all of these, offering our spoken prayers and now the silent meditations of our hearts. Amen. There aren't that many stories in the Bible that jump out at you as being warm, fuzzy stories appropriate for Mother's Day meditations. And after being in the same pulpit for 12 years as I have been, you soon exhaust most of those warm, fuzzy Mother's Day passages. But Matthew's story of the desperate mother seeking to do whatever she could to get help for her daughter seemed most appropriate for today, especially in light of current circumstances. Both Matthew and Mark relate that the daughter had a demon or evil spirit. At that time, 
Having a demon or evil spirit was a broad description for a variety of issues that could easily be diagnosed and most likely treated today. So we don't really know what the daughter's illness or condition was. None of the biblical commentators I consulted ventured to speculate what the daughter's natural condition might have been. But such is really beside the point for today's purposes anyway. The chief point for today's purposes is the distraught mother went to great lengths to seek whatever help she could get for her daughter she so loved. As a Gentile woman, the barriers she sought to cross were nigh impossible. Cultural, ethnic, Political, economic, and religious barriers stood between her and Jesus and the blessing she sought for her daughter. Even as Jesus and his disciples continued walking down the road, she followed after them, making a scene as she cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus stopped, the woman fell at his feet and humbly begged, help me, sir. When Jesus told her that his mission was only to the people of Israel, she pressed him further, begging for just a crumb of mercy. Such struck a chord with Jesus, and through her quick wit, her mother's love, and her great faith, she won Jesus over, and he gave her and her daughter his blessing. In the course of life, many are the occasions when mothers and fathers go to great lengths to do what they can for their children, or in many cases, their grandchildren. I remember how that one night in the early 1960s, when I was quite young, a very disturbing story was aired on the evening world news. At least it was disturbing to me, a child of six or seven. The story showed a group of people who had sold or given away all their earthly possessions and had moved to a large cave somewhere in some remote area of the country because it had been revealed to them that on a certain day, not too many weeks in the future, the world was going to come to an end. The world was going to be destroyed. Now, today we might pass off such a story as another example of misguided zealots who have been led astray by another cult leader. Such things happen every now and then. But to a boy of six or seven, this news report was quite disturbing to me. My mom, I always believed, realized that the story had upset me, and she sought to do what she could to change the mood of the evening when she said, how about I make us a batch of chocolate fudge? It was a little thing, but she did what she could under the circumstances, and it helped. And then there was the time when I had to be hospitalized for the better part of a week just a couple of weeks before Christmas because of complications from strep throat and scarlet fever. My mom stayed with me in the hospital around the clock. That's what moms often are called upon to do, to do whatever they can for their children. Doing what we can. Well, changing focus Lately, I've been feeling a bit guilty as I've watched the evening news day after day and seen story after story of how difficult life has become for so many in our country. Doctors, nurses, and other uh, medical personnel working tirelessly around the clock to treat and care for the sick. Hundreds of cars lined up and waiting for hours in hopes of receiving a box of groceries, only to be told, sorry, we're out of food. 
Stories of people who can't pay their bills and have tried calling dozens or hundreds of times to apply for unemployment benefits. People separated from their loved ones who are in hospitals or nursing homes battling the coronavirus. The depressing news, it seems, just never ends. And after a while, it becomes overwhelming. But all of this has caused me to ask myself, what can I do? What can I do to help, even in a small way, to respond to the present crisis and meet someone's need and alleviate at least a little bit of human deprivation and suffering. And so this week I compiled a list of 10 things I might do, many of us might do, in response to the current situation. One, say some prayers for those who are battling the coronavirus and for those in the medical fields treating them and for others who are risking their safety to provide needed services. Two, continue to observe social distancing, keeping six feet away from others for your own good and for theirs. Three, wear a mask when you have to go out and be around others for your safety and for theirs. Four, if you can sew, and have the necessary materials, make some cloth masks according to CDC guidelines to be donated to medical personnel, nursing homes, and others who need them most. Five, if you can't sew, and not everyone can, then make a financial contribution to those who can and who are making masks for those who need them most. Six, make some phone calls to people who may live alone or have special needs to check on them. Seven, support a local restaurant by buying one of their gift cards or by ordering takeout or curbside service. And be generous as you can when you tip the server. Eight, write some short notes and send some cards in the mail to people who may live alone and who may be struggling with isolation. Nine, make a financial contribution to Second Harvest Food Bank or another organization that is working hard to supply out of work families with groceries and to put food on their tables or to feed the children who have relied upon the schools to feed them. And 10, Use your imagination to come up with some other way to try to respond to the world's great need. These suggestions may seem small in comparison to the problems around us, and in many ways they are small. But we feel the need to do something, and these suggestions are things that most of us can do. Like the Canaanite mother who faced tremendous odds to seek help for her daughter, we face tremendous odds today too. But let us do what we can. Amen. And now a parting benediction as we have joined our spirits in worship. Let us now determine to do what we can to serve others. And in serving, may we find true joy and lasting joy. And may the comforting presence of God be with us all. Amen.